Today we'll look at some unsafe code to have inside your implementation for an Open Zeppelin upgradable contract. Some of the unsafe code to have inside your implementation contract is a constructor, being able to call the initialization function more than once, reorder storage, and having a self-destruct function inside the implementation. Let's take a look at each of these scenarios and see why they are unsafe. Why is having a constructor inside the implementation contract unsafe? Here I have a proxy contract and the implementation contract I named it B1. Let's say that inside the proxy contract, the owner state variable is set to Bob. And imagine that inside the implementation contract, we have a constructor. So when this contract is deployed, it sets owner to Alice. Now, since the proxy contract actually does not use the state variable inside the implementation, even though we want to set the owner state variable to Alice, and this will set the owner to Alice inside the B1 contract, but our intention was to set the owner inside the proxy contract to Alice, and that did not happen. In other words, when we have a constructor inside the implementation contract, it sets the state variables inside the implementation contract, but that is not reflected inside the proxy contract. So now let's say that we have a state variable inside the proxy contract. I'm naming it Bal for this example, and we want it to set it to some number when the implementation contract is deployed. So how do we do this? The standard way of initializing state variables without the constructor is to have another function called initialize, where you will pass in some inputs and then set the state variables. In this case, we'll pass in a bow to set the bow state variable to the input. We deploy the implementation contract, and after the contract is deployed, we call the function initialize. And assuming that the state variable is defined inside the proxy contract, when this function is executed, it will set val equal to 1 to 3. And because for proxy contract we're using delegate call, this will update val to equal to 1 to 3. To summarize, constructors are unsafe method. So implementation contracts will usually not have a constructor. And in order to initialize state variables, we have another function called initialize. For safety reasons, this initialize function can only be called once. The Open Zeppelin upgradable tool is smart enough to warn us when there is an unsafe code. The unsafe code that we have here inside this contract is a constructor. Inside the constructor, we set the state variable owner to message.sender. Also, take a look at here. Here, we set the state variable val to 1 to 3 and the state variable start to block that timestamp. Although these two code are not inside the constructor, these state variables are set when the contract is deployed, so effectively they are doing the same thing as if these state variables are set inside the constructor. All of these code are unsafe code. If we try to deploy this contract, Open Zeppelin tool will give us a warning not to deploy the contract. So let's give it a try. Here I have the script to deploy unsafe B1 contract. This code is basically the same as the code from the previous video where we deployed box B1. To call the script, I'm going to open my terminal. And then we'll execute the script by typing emb cat.emb mpx hard hat run dash dash network robston. And the script to run is scripts deploy unsafe b1.js. And notice that our script failed. Digging into the error message, it says error contract unsafe b1 is not upgrade safe. Why is it not upgrade safe? Well, because unsafe b1 has a constructor, val is assigned the initial value, and same with start. So it is unsafe to have a constructor, so I'll comment these code out. Now this contract does not have a constructor, and we're not initializing any state variables, so this contract is safe for deployment. Now there are exceptions for initializing variables and setting some variables inside the constructors. These are constant variables and immutables. These are safe code to have inside your implementation contract. Here I have a constant, I named it my constant and I've set it to 133. This is safe code. Constants are safe because they are not state variables. They don't use the storage. The value of a constant is stored inside the code of the implementation, not the storage. So that is why it is safe. And it is same for immutables. 
Immutables are like constant, except that you can set the value of an immutable variable when the contract is deployed, so inside the constructor. Like the constant, immutables are also part of the code of the contract, and it does not use any storage. So that is why having immutables inside your implementation contract is safe. And for this example, we will feed in a uint to the constructor and set my immutable to x. Now having a constructor open Zeppelin will still complain, so we will need to put this custom error message telling open Zeppelin tools to ignore that we have a constructor. We're telling open Zeppelin that we know that this code is safe. And this is what this comment does. And the same goes for this comment over here. Before we deploy this contract, let's talk about initialization. After this contract is deployed, since we cannot set some of the state variables inside the constructor, we will need an initialization function. For this example, we'll set the state variable owner, bow, and start. To replace the constructor, I've created a function called initialize, taking in some parameters, and set the owner, bow, and start. Now for security reasons, you only want this function to be called once. Imagine that your contract is a wallet and you want to set the owner to message.sender. And also imagine that anyone can call this function more than once. And then the owner can be set to anyone, meaning that your wallet no longer belongs to you. So you only want to restrict this function to be able to call once. So one way to achieve this is to have a state variable that is set to true when this function is called. For example, we might have a state variable called initialized. And when the function initialize is called, we set initialize to true. This will be a modifier. So this function can only be called if initialize is still false. Execute the function and set initialize equal to true. And then attach this modifier, not initialize, to the initialize function. But actually, we don't need to write this code since OpenZeppin provides the code just to do this. So I'll comment this out and scroll up to import some contracts from Open Zeppelin. From Open Zeppelin contracts, we will need to import a contract called initializable and then inherit it by saying unsafe b1 is initializable. And then scrolling down, we will replace this modifier with initializer. Like the code that we wrote over here, now this function can only be called once. I've modified the deployment script to take in constructor argument and to call the initialize function. For the constructor argument, we're passing 999. If we go back to the contract, inside the constructor, we're passing 999 to set the immutable variable to 999. After the contract is deployed, this script will call the initialize function, passing in 444 as an input to the function initialize. Again, if we go back to the contract, scroll down to the function initialize, it takes in a single input. So this will be 444 that we passed, and then it will set bow to 444. We will execute the script again. After a few minutes, our unsafe b1 contract is now deployed. Now, if you look over here, notice that it created a dot open Zeppelin folder. And if you look inside, You'll see some information about where the contract is deployed, the transaction hash, and also some data about the storage layout. What state variables are declared inside the unsafe b1 contract and in what order they are declared. Don't delete this file. This is an important file for upgrades. So we talked about why constructor and being able to initialize more than once is unsafe. Let's now talk about what happens if we reorder storage. What happens if we reorder state variables or change them around? Or add new ones? What can go wrong? Imagine that we have a proxy contract and inside it, owner is set to Bob and the state variable bow is set to 133. For the B1 implementation, we have the state variables owner and then the state variable bow declared in this order, owner and then bow. Now let's also say that for version two, we made some kind of mistake and we switch the order around. We declare bow first and then owner second. What can go wrong when we execute code against version two? Let's take a look. So we'll call the function set bow 
trying to set it to 456. Inside the proxy, this will call a fallback, and the fallback will delegate call, calling set bow, trying to set it to 456. This will call the function set bow inside B2. Now inside B2, since bow is the first state variable, it would try to update this first state variable to 456. Again, using delegate call, we're actually updating the state variable of the proxy contract. So instead of setting bow to 456, it updates the first state variable, which is owner, and it sets owner to 456. This is not what we want it to do. Again, OpenZeppelin tool is smart enough to warn us when the state variables are unsafe for upgrade. In this case, when the state variable change. For example, we'll switch the order of the first state variable with the second. So I'll put bow up on top. And then we'll try to deploy this contract. Now, how does OpenZeppelin know that the layout of the state variables had changed from version 1 to version 2? Well, the tool knows this because going back, it looks at the .openzeppelin file, which stores the storage data of the contracts that were deployed. Again, so don't delete this file. This is an important file to keep. To deploy version two of the contract, we'll use the script upgrade on safe B2. This script is basically the same as the one where we used to upgrade box B1 to box B2 in the previous video. I'll open my terminal and then we'll execute the command upgrade unsafe b2.js. And notice that the script failed and the error message is new storage layout is incompatible. The storage layout is incompatible because we changed the order of the state variables. In the previous version, owner was declared first and bow second, but in this version, we declare bow first and then owner second. As long as we declare the state variables in the same order as the previous version, this code is safe. And for the same reason, adding new state variables below the ones that we have already defined is safe. This is because the previous storage layout does not change by adding new state variables to the bottom of it. And to show you this, I've declared a new state variable. I named it safe new state bar. And we'll deploy this contract. We'll execute the command again. After a few minutes, our upgrade was successful. For the last scenario, let's see why having a self-destruct inside the implementation contract is unsafe. Again, imagine that we have a proxy contract and the implementation contract. And inside the implementation contract, there is a function to self-destruct, meaning that if this function were ever to be called, this contract will be deleted. Okay, so let's say that we call self-destruct and the implementation contract is deleted from the blockchain. What will happen if we try to call a function on the implementation? Well, the proxy will delegate call to the implementation, but the implementation is no longer there, meaning that there is no code to execute. So any call to the proxy contract will now fail. Again, OpenZeppelin will give you warnings if you have a self-destruct inside your implementation contract. And to show you this, I'm back at unsafe b1 contract and I've added the function called kill which will call self-destruct. We'll try deploying this contract by executing the open zeppelin script and the script will fail. Now before we do that I'm gonna delete this dot open zeppelin file which stores the information of the contracts that we have deployed. We want to start new so I'll just delete this folder. Once we deleted the folder we'll now call the script deploy on safe b1 again. Open the terminal and then execute deploy on safe b1. And as expected, the script failed. With the error message, use of self-destruct is not allowed. So these are some unsafe code inside your implementation contract. Constructor, being able to initialize more than once, reordering storage, and having a self-destruct inside the implementation contract. In the next video, I'll show you how to do an ERC20 upgradable contract. Thanks for watching. See you later.